Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new episode of the X Button, Season 3, Episode 30. I'm one of your hosts, Alejandro, and with me is the Lunarian. Paul, hey everybody. I like space. Yeah. <laughs> and here's what's so funny about that that word. I'm saying I'm calling you Lunarian because that's the 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 beast class of the moon at Final Fantasy IV, but it also makes sense with an upcoming game <laughs> that's also set in space because we love space. How you doing, yep. Paul? Well, we are. Uh, I very early. specifically yeah. chose my words on that one. Yeah. That, that's why I did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm doing well. I'm drinking a nice little uh, sparkling pineapple drink. Mm -hmm. Get something refreshing after this hot day. Yeah. Um, Was it really we hot? We finally broke. We finally broke into like the mid 90s. Mm. So it, it's like it's pretty warm. However, uh, if you go into the shade, you actually get cool. Yeah, you, um, you feel the that's, that's the only thing, because even with the humidity up here, it's not nearly what it is back home. So mm. yeah, I will take it because you're technically in the mountain, if I remember. So it's like not quite We're the mountain, but you're there. So by default, just being in the shade, you should feel like the mountain breeze. So. Right, it's exactly right. Because um, we're technically a temperate rainforest, so we still get a good amount of rain, yeah, and we still get a lot of humidity. But it's a very different kind. It's really weird, but I am not going to complain. That's for sure. Yeah. Anyway, but hey, the fall is coming, Paul, if pretty soon, which is fitting for this episode because this this week's episode's again another special episode. We've done quite a few special episodes this year. I kind of like that because um, even though. Sometimes we have a lot of news. Sometimes like we are just dedicating time for just one game, like we did with both Jedi Survivor and uh, Final Fantasy. Uh, I also I, I like breaking format a little bit uh, when we need to, especially right now where we're recording early because this is week is a vacation week for me, and I wa definitely wanted to take a little bit of the later days of this week off. So I was like, but I like uh, posting unless it's December. I don't want to like miss an episode if we can't. So. That's why we're doing a special episode, and this special episode is our most anticipated games of fall 2023. So, Paul, uh, 2023, like, to, it's funny, we're starting August today, like, today is August 1st. So, mm -hmm. we're, like, nicking at the heels of fall at this point. It's like, it's so close, and uh, what a gaming year 2023 has been so far. Just with from January to, like, July, I literally went to my list of, like, one because I, like, keep tally of my top 10, and for, for a to have ready what we do every January, and I basically have my list already. Like if we, if the year had stopped yesterday, yeah. like the list is done. Like to me, it's like, that's the kind of year it's been, and we still have a fall ahead. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's one of those things that if we got half of what we had for this whole year, I would consider it a above average year of top ten games for me. Because as you've seen. My 2020 and my 2021 games of the year were severely lacking mm -hmm. because I just kind of tolerated half of them. And I really yeah. only liked maybe like four to five out of that group where here it is just banger after banger after banger. No, no, <laughs> not only that, uh, this shook. is this is finally a year where it feels like you have a legit top 10 that you finish instead of padding things out or putting things that you put halfway through and then you never finish. And then it's like... A, it's blazing in the top ten. It just don't doesn't uh, hold up hold up to scrutiny, which is why I was like telling you that whenever we're gonna do this year, this coming uh, game of the year for uh, whenever we hit January twenty twenty four, I was gonna make the uh, kind of like the rule for that one specifically was gonna be all twenty twenty three games and all finished games. And what's funny is that even with everything that happened to you this year, with the move and all that. You've pretty much accomplished it. <laughs> so. I have finished everything that's currently on my top 10 list, I believe. So, yep. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get even crazier because yeah. we have all of what we're going to talk about today. The main reason for this episode yeah. is because we have so much to talk about that we need to at least like take a minute mm -hmm. amidst this buffet to say, all right, that's that's what came before. Now here's what's about to come up next. Yeah. Before we start doing that, Paul, I just like spitballing. Uh, what's the best thing you play this year? Mm. If whenever you think 2023 was the best thing I play this year. I have to say Zelda. Zelda, same. Is it I, also, I just, yeah, same. Yeah, um, just because of what it did for the industry, uh, but just like the sheer, what can I look back on the experiences mm -hmm. that I had with all of these games? The one that stuck with me the most is, of course, the character created moments are 
mm-hmm. player created moments rather of just the absolute insanity that you could do and we've already talked to death about that whole concept yeah. and uh, i just have to continue to give it to zelda unless something changes yeah it's like if we, if we want to be like objective about it zelda is the best game that came out this year that's like fact yeah. uh the game with my favorite moments is final fantasy 16. So, I agree to that as well. So, Absolutely. And, so, and, and I definitely want to keep that flame going for that one because even how many weeks since we've recorded the spoiler cast now, it feels like it's been like three at this at, at this point. Uh, yeah. It's like even when we were done with that, it's like me going going back to that game still, the soundtrack is still like a permanent, in permanent rotation for me, especially when I found that SoundCloud link that I told you that has the the full album that someone uploaded because that's still not available like officially. It's just for purchase. But someone like put it in, yeah. in SoundCloud, so I keep like listening to it as like my workout, my my workout, uh, uh, like music at this point, and it it doesn't fail. It's like I still like feel the warm emotions of that experience, and uh, that's why I was like, it, it just em- uh, exemplifies like what a great year that I have. Like a game that both with Zelda like is pushing things forward, and then one that made me feel what it made me feel. So it's like. And then, and that, that's not even like um, diminishing even some of the things that came before that. It's like that's it's just been a really solid year. Like this has been what 2022 needed to be for me. Uh, 2022 eventually came together near the end after we have went through like such a famish, and there's barely been a famish this year. And it won't be with everything that's coming out. Like uh, we both got our top tens. I, I even told you to like write some honorable mentions. You wrote four. I wrote fifteen. Like honorable mentions, so even like to me, an honorable mention is like I'm interested. I want to know. I like. I want to see how that one turns out. And just even from that uh, perspective, just 25 games, like for from here to the rest of the year. And here's what's funny about us recording right now: Gamescom is happening like in two weeks or three weeks. Some of, there's so many games that still don't have release dates. So yep. those could those could even be solidified, like in a few weeks, because that's what happened last year. We had we got. So I released it for games that were still iffy for that year, uh, and, and Gamescom that could happen again. So, so th- this list could be even outdated by the time that happens. But in the here and now, because of the circumstances, I think we can make work with what we know already has a solid release date and has either gone gold or is so close that we know that it's happening. So, and if you've noticed, Paul, this year, how nice has it been that we barely got in delays? It's, it is a so nice. breath of fresh air, that's for sure, because I was kind of used to just all of the disappointment until mm-hmm. finally realizing, oh, this is what it feels like when a game, or at least a development team, says that they're going to hit a deadline and then mm-hmm. they actually do. Yeah. Would have thought. Yeah. But, and again, I think because now the pandemic is... Even though it's like we, it's part of our daily lives now. It's like that virus is just has just become endemic now. Now we know it exists, and it's instead of everything that got disrupted in the last three years, this finally feel this year in particular feels like the result of all the delays that happened before that of, of, of all disruption coming coming together to cram everything here. But also developers finally getting back into a group so that now it's just a steady cadence. Like we went through all the three years of famish that was. The last three years where everything like that was good felt so precious and now it's like now it's just an embarrassment of riches so but um oh, yes but yeah before we start this is just a reminder that this is the x bottom podcast or gaming podcast that posts every friday from 2 p.m onwards god willing available on the youtube channel escape gaming as well as most audio services around the world apple podcast spotify and the like you can find links in the rss feed at tinyurl.com slash escape gaming if you enjoy our show Give us a like and subscribe, and also review if you're like on Spotify or your favorite audio service. Paul, um, let's start with the top ten. So I'll start with mine, and right. how we we're gonna do is how we usually do it. If a game I mention it's in your list, you can talk about the game now. Just don't talk about where it's placed, and then by Got the it. time we get to your place, then we can just quickly move on. So, All right. So whenever you're listing through it, you'll talk about it, and yeah. I'll mm-hmm. jump in. Yeah. Got so. it. All right. My num- yeah, my number ten is a game that's literally coming next week. Uh, Atlas Fallen. This is a game by the, by Deck Thirteen. This is these are the guys that made uh, the orig- the search and also the original Lords of the Fallen. That they're doing this game that looks kind of like uh, Forspoken earlier this year, but with a cooler aesthetic. 
and a cooler premise, it feels like. And it's coming from Focus Home Interactive, which in recent years has been like silently putting some like underappreciated gems, like last year's uh, Plague Tale Requiem. So it's like this feels like the perfect game for this time where it's like August is not quite fall, but it's the tail end. It's still tail end of summer. If you're still trying to find things to play as you wait for the big things, this feels like one of those. And the coolest thing is that it's co-op. So I just think about like the idea, like especially as we're playing uh, Remnant too right now and having a lot of fun just playing co-op. I was strictly like sequestering myself from just continuing that game just to play co-op with you. And I'm like, I want to play more of these games co-op and that this feels like a fun one that I'm hoping that it comes out, it comes together. Um, that's one that if we get code, I may review over at Season Gaming, but it's like not a full commitment yet. So yeah, that's like my number 10. Uh, that is in one of my listed numbers as well. I have almost nothing to say about it. Aside from the fact that I'm glad it's co-op, it looks cool, and the traversal seems nice. And I hope that it ends up yeah. hitting it out of the park in that department. Yeah, and, and it feels like, a, and just something quicker, is like, I'm glad that this studio, that their last games were Souls games, they're making a game that looks more like a Devil May Cry slash old God of War. Because uh, if there's something that Final Fantasy 16 has been like such a nice reminder this year, it's been like, yeah, action games can be more than just Souls likes. Souls likes have just become so endemic in, in, in the gaming industry. Now you see the influence literally everywhere, even in our current game with Remnant 2, that it feels refreshing seeing games like hearkening back to not just like the camera straight to your back and circular around and dodging and all that. So. Uh, that's that, that's one of the things that appeals me about Atlas Fallen, and also the idea that it could be the better Forspoken of this year after Forspoken earlier this year. So that's in your list too, not in number ten, right? Yeah. Okay. So, hit me with your number ten, Paul. Uh, my number ten was Immortals of Avalon. Av Avium. Avi Avium. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Avium. Yeah, goes to show uh, how little I can pronounce it because I, at one point I was super high on this. Mm -hmm. I dropped really low and then it just barely eked out a number 10 spot this time because it's there. Um, I'm excited for what it might do to branching out the first person shooter, but like it's there's something different about it it's kind of yeah. like the order 1886 but done potentially better because mm -hmm. it's like that kind of idea it used a lot of mechanics that we're used to but does something new with it which is kind of what we need in the first person shooter mm -hmm. space anyway so i think i'm more excited about what it could do for the wider development idea mm -hmm. than like the game itself i think yeah um i feel like what makes this exciting is the fact that it's a single another single player game coming from ea again them putting their money where their mouth is where them the company that used to say that single player is dead all they were like see, almost six years ago and now they're like the third party from like the big three that really com it's committing to like pure single player experiences them giving a game that hasn't been done since the old days of hexen back in the day that were all Raven Software first person magic game. This feels like, hey, remember when you used to, the gaming used to have that? Let's try to bring that back with like modern technology, like a new IP. And the thing, and, and the demo that we saw like in, on cut at the, at the Summer Game Fest, this was the one that clinched it for me. It's like, okay, I'm, now that everything in the big games are done right now, this actually looks really interesting. It sucks that this didn't come out in July. This was supposed to be a July game. This was also a game that I had committed to review, and that got pushed to the middle of the, the middle of uh, August. And right now, it all depends on how long Atlas Fallen is for me with that one. But yep. just the, just in concept alone and in production alone, what, what, what you're seeing there is like it's cool that again it's coming from EA, which this year they gave us not only Jedi Survivor but also Dead Space and Wild Hearts. So when you think at like the uh, just the lineup that EA has had just this year alone including now including this one is like that's actually pretty exciting for the public like for EA as a publisher and when a big studio and a big, a big publisher like this one is like committing to these kind of games it sets a good example because when the big ones are like committing to others it's what inspires others to try to follow a trend and I'm glad that EA exactly. is like EA is finding that um, this is my number nine um, do you want me to tell you my number nine? Yeah, I think I know why it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's so funny. We both have it at the bottom of our list flipped. 
Yep. <laughs> so, uh, you're a little bit more excited for Atlas Fallen than Avium. I, I think so, yeah. but I could easily like depending flip. on yeah. the day flip flop either. Of Literally, these. that's that's those are these games for me. It's just like um, not quite padding a list, but it's like uh, they look interesting enough that I'm really excited because especially on a huge list that I have a honorable mentions, it's like the fact that they're close kind of eats them up a little bit. If they were farther along, maybe they would have been honorable mentions for me, but. I feel there, there's something to them. It's like, uh, kind of like what I was telling you with Remnant. Uh, I feel like uh, we are at a, at a point now that we really have to define quadruple A's out of like double A's and having like the new triple A in the middle because Remnant would be considered a double A but doesn't look like it. The production heard like from uh, what we spent from triple A's and this could be that. And maybe that that's kind of like what we need. Like these games that are like in this other middle niche, like there's no rule that should say that AAA should always be like The Last of Us and all of that, which it's a, the kind of game that I'm kind of tired of right now, the whole prestige of things. So, I'm kind of glad in hindsight that people started referring it to Quadruple A because it really is like, it's a disservice to all the actual AAA games to include them into that yeah. category. Yeah, because it's like it sets unrealistic expectations because the games that you could consider Quadruple A is like The God of War Ragnarok, The Last of Us, even Uncharted back in the day. Uh, that are blessed with massive budgets and time and manpower that other AAA studios don't. It's good to like put them up in a higher pedestal. So, and and let AAA like be something that like in like a more uh, uh, remnant. It's playing even at a fifty dollar price point, and that game feels pretty fully featured. So it's like it's quite a step above like double A's. So. Maybe these are the two games that are kind of like in that category, though. Uh, Immortals of Avium is, I think it's priced at 70. So that mm. the, the pricing tends to like uh, maybe skew perspectives a little bit, but this feels like those kind of games. And they and yeah. just on uniqueness and alone, where I want more uniqueness out of my games currently, that that's why like, th these two games are like in that sneaking into the top anticipated. Uh, my number eight poll is Avatar's Frontiers of Pandora, the game that. Basically, it's the last game of this year. That one's coming out in December. Ubisoft with December games, either they actually release, like they did Far Cry 3 or uh, Rainbow Six Siege, or they slipped, like South Park The Fractured Butthole that had a December release that then got pushed. So this one could be like a... This one could go like either way. But what I saw at the... Um, whatchamacallit? The showcase that Ubisoft had, the Ubisoft Forward, showed me a Far Cry game evolved. Kind of like Far Cry, one of Ubisoft's most popular franchises has been done to death because in the Far Cry just sub-series has just been like repeat over and over and over again. And what I saw from Tears of Pandora was giving me some of the grandeur and kind of like the other worldliness that I do love from, from a franchise like Horizon, the Horizon franchise. And now put it in the Pandora, which every time that I watch that movie, it was like those the, the the setting of the movie always screams this could make a really great video game. And this being done by Massive, the studio that did the division, which is one of Ubisoft's best franchises in quality, which is also working on the Star Wars game that's coming out next year. Uh, at least we, I know that the, that the talent behind this game is there. The game actually looks like a, a beautifully next gen with how, with, with how it is and. It being also like a co-op game, uh, by the time that we're done with the year, like by when we're in December, we're like hankering to play something because November, I tell you, is gonna be pretty light as far as like things look because it feels like yeah. all eyes are on September and October. We always go into that phase of like, I want to play something new. If this one's good, this would this would fit the bill for like the end of December, unless we get more December like <laughs> December releases. Like I told you, we're still TBA on the. Uh, on the uh, Gamescom thing. So, yeah, that's my number eight. Nice. Uh, that barely made it into my honorable mentions. Um, I I got to finally see most of, I think, the gameplay of that, and it's a cool idea. It's worth exploring that world, but I don't think it's going to be my cup of tea as much compared to everything else. Yeah, makes sense. That's about it for me on that one. Yeah, honorable mentions at least made is made it there. What's your number right. eight, Paul? My number eight is Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, it's uh, uh, not on my list, by the way. Yeah, I I think this is another example of like the Immortals of Avium because I'm more excited to see what it can do 
to the large D and D community that has mm -hmm. just barely anything. Uh, the turn-based like real strategy, um, mm -hmm. the Dragon Age and Mass Effect crew that have been ah. just starved. Um, and there's a little part of me that just likes kind of craving a little bit of that trashy drama that mm -hmm. Mass Effect and Dragon Age used to throw at us. But um, I, I doubt that I'm going to play it. <laughs> because everything else is coming out um and you're so like, and you literally answer why it's in an honorable mention for me this one yeah. is a big team of timing for me um this game's Absolutely. coming out in two days in pc i am not gonna play that game on pc because i only have a gaming laptop and this is supposed to be a very long game and i wouldn't want to play like in this like seat that i like in this chair that i'm sitting like in that lot to, to play that kind of game especially because uh, this D and D style game is a lot about the mouse and keyboard and all of that, and the PS5 version, which I would want to play, is coming out the same day as um, as another big game that's later in our lists. So, and that one's like more of more of more importance to me technically. So that's why like this one like dropped to like a normal mention because this one used to be in my list, but then I was just being realistic about like, will I really be playing it? That's why like I didn't like. And the top 10 are games that I really want to play, got a controller and play, regardless. And an honorable mention to me is like, uh, justifies the exactly thing that you said. I want to see what it does for the people that love that kind of game. Especially because I've heard great things about the early access. Great, yeah. great things. So. I think that's the main reason why I was so hype about the, any of it at all. Because I was just like, well, dang, um, that seems kind of awesome, actually. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that's really the main reason for that. Uh, what's your... We're at seven now? Uh, yes. Uh, so she's going to be in our number seven. Uh, that will be... Uh, for me, it's Assassin's Creed Mirage. The going back to roots for the Assassin's Creed series that uh, have been, they have been teasing a little bit more uh, about kind of like how they're sim simplifying the system. Uh, them emphasizing, yeah, this is game, this is a game that's gonna take you 20 to 25 hours. It's gonna be five times smaller than Valhalla, which is like music to my ears. There was a, the screenshot that I sent you on Sunday when the, the, the devs literally said that. So it's just the fact that they, it, the game's like even priced cheaper. Uh, they're being intentional about, uh, kind of like I've been saying, it's like serving a community that hasn't had this kind of uh, Assassin's Creed game for like forever now. Uh, especially ever since Origins, uh, if people and even though this is not the full return to the old style, you're currently playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate, so it's like they're not going back to the same old uh, control schemes and all that. They're just trying to make that kind of old school game in the new, uh, kind of like in the new systems and all that. So I want to see how if it works, and I want to see if it's good, and I want to see also if it resonates enough that it becomes a huge success that then tells Ubisoft, hey. There is still money to be made if with this kind of Assassin's Creed game. The only reason why you had to move away from it last time was because you were beating it into the ground every year, over and over and over and over and over again. With the breaks, like I feel I haven't had that kind of Assassin's Creed game in eight years. If we're like perfectly honest, because this is not going to be an RPG. That is actually pretty exciting. But it also being Ubisoft and this not being made by the main Ubisoft Montreal team. It is being done by this is being done by uh, by one of the, the 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 guys that made the best DLC for Valhalla, but it's still kind of like I know it's a it's a separate team. There's always a worry that maybe it's not gonna come together, and they kind of gave this to like someone else to just finish. So slight repetition of that, but the excitement of like being able to get that Assassin's Creed experience again, it's that's why it's in my number seven. So it's on my list as well mm -hmm. and basically all the same reasoning behind it it is the game that could put ubisoft back into the right mm -hmm. motivations especially when I, it's basically that one episode of spongebob where he goes off and does all this crazy stuff and then he realizes that everybody just wants him to act like a fry cook now yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's like man i'm so glad i stopped being a fry cook over this but <clears throat> The, um, the basic connection being that if they figure it out, it kind of doesn't matter what lessons they learn as long as they know that doing that makes money. Mm -hmm. As long as Mirage ends up actually being what they're looking for. Yeah, because what we're looking for. So yeah, especially rather. since we know that the 2024 one is red. Yeah, code, code name red, the one that's in right. Japan. 
they even gave more details that that was gonna be like an African American uh, ninja or something like that. So it's like weird. Oh. Yeah. So that oh. that that came out like in between our recording last week to this one since we're not doing news. So more details have been like leaking about that one. We know that one's been made by the Assassin's Creed Odyssey team. That's gonna be the next big RPG for them. So in these two games, we're gonna have two flavors, and we'll see which one wins out. And then which one wins out is gonna set the thing. So I really hope this is the one that, on top of being good, is the one that wins out. So then the one that comes out after Red can switch things around, and they know that they can. They don't need to make humongous. RPGs like Valhalla. The only reason why I was able to commit to Valhalla last year was because we had nothing to play. Remember? That was the only reason I was able to like uh, squeeze that eye. You still haven't finished Valhalla. And you had it since launch. You played it since launch. <laughs> so, yep. So, it's like I just have better things to do with my time because I just. They're, they just kill us with all that bloatingness, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that this one they said is like you can do it in 25 to 30 hours. Mm -hmm. That's still a v fairly meaty, meaty game, single yeah. player game. Uh, you don't have to go all out. You don't have to make every game a Yakuza game. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be Persona every time. Exactly. You don't have to replicate all of this endlessly over and over again in a giant map that you can't do anything in. Um, so yeah, I enough said and the fact that they're kind of going back to their roots not only mechanically but also basically into the crusades again i believe yeah again yeah. Mm -hmm. like sign me up let's yeah. go <laughs> yeah so this one's later in your list right um based on where we're yes, at yeah, that's so, correct <laughs> yeah so read me a uh, your number seven paul my number seven is going to be the metal gear solid master collection volume one yes uh, that one's an honorable mm -hmm. mention for me uh, yeah, I it would be higher, except for the fact that I recently replayed part of two. Mm -hmm. We've gotten confirmation we're getting a three remake. Yeah. Um. So really, I would be buying it to finally one. play one mm -hmm. and any of the Metal Gears that I never got my hands on. Yeah, obviously. the older ones, the MSX ones, the original exactly. 1986 one, and all that. Um, so like, I'd like to try it. Yeah. just to have it i was mulling about the about making this one part of the top 10 or just an honorable mention and then other games kind of be like yeah i think i can just squeeze it as an honorable mention to me it's like this is a, a historic moment for me with this show how many times have i said that i wish the metal gear solid series could officially be like playable in modern hardware yeah. instead of me keeping my ps3 hooked up because that's where i have all the metal gear games except five because five i bought it on ps4 even though there's a ps3 right. version of five and ground zeros is like that's the worst way to play those you have to play play them with the modern coat of paint and and just the idea to finally like playstation owners for example uh the ps4 generation for metal like if you're a metal gear fan and you're on playstation 4 you're sol like you all were only you could only play ground zeros and five and briefly two three and peace walker through ps now so streaming so that generation xbox one was actually the one that uh that had the native backwards compatibility to, for you to play 2, 3, and Peace Walker, and 5 also. So, obviously Metal Gear 1 and 4 have been like stranded, like Metal Gear 1 has just been a PS1 and PC game for for literally uh, forever, and then Metal Gear Solid 4 is just a PS3 game, so. And now, and them specifically specifically calling this Volume 1, and us getting the, the news that people unearthed the changes to the website that signifies the Volume 2 that's gonna include 4 uh, finally in modern times it's like this feels great because the things that whether the remake that they do for 3 is good or not especially with Kojima not being involved just the fact that the, his original work as is remastered could be available is just enough because it's, it preserves that series forever I can tell people play these now and it like again like so many franchises with the remasters that we got in ps4 and ps5 they live again or they live in a way that they can always be revisited like the devil may cry the resident evils and metal gear always deserved to to do that so that's why it's an honorable mention for me because it's like if the year wasn't a stack it would be my top 10 because i freaking love metal gear now my number six paul which is funny because it also it's also in the title armor core six fires of rubicon uh the latest game by um uh, from software uh, who is basically like the king of the world currently with Elden Ring last year and all that. But um, yep. uh, 
this is inter this this one to me has been fascinating because this this is finally their return to Armor Core after almost ten years. The last time they put out an Armor Core game was Armor Core five Armor Core five in twenty thirteen. So it completely skipped the PS4 and the Xbox One generation. And uh, even though this one's actually launching in those old systems also, but this is after they had spent the entire decade becoming the Souls guys. But before they were the Souls guys, they were the king, uh, the, the, the development king of like doing a bunch of weird crap. Weird, weird games that were so unique to them. And one of those was Armor Core. And uh, my big question with Armor Core has been like, will it become more Soulsy? Uh, what are the things that they're gonna do like to to uh, to bring that franchise into the modern era, especially with all that they've learned? And from what I understand, is like they've been able to perfectly marry both. Like sensibility is like it's still an armor core game through and through. We were seeing some of the previews that came out recently that said that it's very uh, it's meant to be like a fighting game. Like the missions that you take that they shouldn't take uh, so long because a lot of the time you have to spend it like customizing your mech. You have to spend mm -hmm. it like optimizing things for a specific mission, and uh, how, how good you optimize something uh, will mean the success in your mission. And there's just something about seeing a mech game like in mo like modernly, and with, especially with some of the clips that we saw, that it, it actually makes me really curious to really try to really try and see if it wins me over. And the thing is that last year was my uh, from software coming out party for me. Where it was like I always respected them. I had beat in Bloodborne before, but their games always felt like they were beyond me. And Elden Ring like helped me penetrate in a good way. And then I did that Souls bench. And obviously, there's not gonna be that. But uh, now that I understand that they're very idios, there had they, there's certain idi idiosyncrasies to their games, and I have more of a tolerance to getting to the nitty gritty of idiosyncrasies, especially with me going through the idiosyncrasies of turn-based RPGs with uh, the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters recently, I feel like my mind is finally at the right place to be able to like engage with whatever they're asking for with this one. Uh, and that could backfire, and maybe it's gonna bounce me up, but who knows, but it's still a pretty exciting game. It's coming pre also relatively soon. That's like in the middle of August also. So, yeah, can't wait to see how this one turns out. That's why it's my number six. Well, it is in my list as well. Mm -hmm. um, I am stoked for this game. Everything that I've seen about it since its original trailer that was like a very rare example of a fully CG trailer mm -hmm. actually hyping me up yeah. because it just gave me the this idea because um, it conveyed what the game was going to be like much better than a lot of CG trailers do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then only after like going back to see what old gameplay of Ace, uh, I almost said Ace Combat, uh, Armored Core. AC, Door. they have AC in the game. Ace Combat and Armored oh. Core. <laughs> Doesn't help that they're so similar. Yeah. Armored and Core. The, um, and the menu sounds similar also. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah, uh, Armored Core, previous Armored Core games, they looked really cool. And I'm just kicking myself for not having gotten into that series back in the day. Granted, I don't know, maybe they would have been a little bit less uh, approachable to a newcomer in some ways, but it sounds like, yeah, they were. Um, I ran so this Armor uh, Core 4 uh, back in PS3 in 2007 when I was like at such a... That was the famish era of the PS3. There was barely anything I wanted to rent and be like, what can I pick here? Okay, that robot game looks really cool. Let me try it. And uh, obviously I only had a two-day rental period, but my God is like the death back then, especially for my feeble 13-year-old mind was too much <laughs> it was almost too much uh so but again different times uh different eras different like mindsets so this is probably the time for you too to like be able to like absorb that kind of depth so yeah absolutely i think i'm gonna finally be in the right position for all of that i am so like just to realize sheer the sheer amount of customization that's available from just like the colors, the pieces, the parts, the fact that it completely changes the way your mech moves. You can have like tank treads, you can mm. have regular feet, jet packs. Like a Transformers. <laughs> it's like just everything you can imagine that's ever been popularized in the mecha genre is there for your choosing. And you could just make whatever freaking mech you want. Like, I, I can't believe that I didn't know how awesome that is because i am such a sucker for customization and wild like messing around with stuff 
So the fact that they explain that your gameplay bursts are supposed to be really short, actually. Mm -hmm. And then you just go into like changing it up for the next match. And then you're like, okay, this is part of what it is. And that comparison they made to a fighting game really made me understand like, oh, this is what's going to set my expectations for this game mm -hmm. moving forward, because it's not going to be this big war of attrition, 30 minutes to an hour where you're just trapped as that mech. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you just switching out, going through yeah. different things. Who knows if I'm going to finish it? Because that's yeah. like 50 to 60 hours, they say, but yeah, I feel like nuts. I'm going to enjoy what I play quite a bit before I finally move on. Yeah, and maybe like it can be like a nice side, side dish, like mm -hmm. uh, because big things are coming sooner after that one comes out. And they may, if like you're feeling tired of one, then you go jump back to this one or just kind of like back, bounce back and forth. Uh, it feels like the, the, the design intent allow is gonna allow for that, so I don't feel too worried about this getting like, especially in such a crowded release period that we're getting right now in August, that it could get lost. So, so yeah, excited for that one. Definitely, that one's also higher in your list than mine. <laughs> so, yep. Um, my next one, we're at six now, I believe, yeah. is mm -hmm. Sea of Stars. An honorable mention for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is basically um, I watched my roommates play chrono trigger back in the day mm -hmm. and even then i was like well i'm not really big into turn-based right now but i see why people loved this mm -hmm. and especially having played dragon age 11 and going oh i i kind of get it but also this gets really dragon cool very quickly dragon quest <laughs> You said Dragon, uh, Dragon Age 11. It's Dragon Shoot. Quest. <laughs> oh, it's on a gun. Dragon <laughs> Quest 11. Yeah, okay. No. Anyway, um, seeing what people are able to do, especially in the indie scene, with turn-based combat really made me realize that it's not an issue of that genre, mechanic, whatever you want to call it, but more of the implementation of people not willing to take risks. Mm-hmm where you have like your chain decos that i keep mentioning and all of this other stuff and even going back to the old school final fantasy games and seeing how they were able to implement it in such an interesting way uh makes me realize that people have kind of fallen back on that as kind of a crutch more than doing much with it and sea of stars is one of those first turn-based games in a long time that i realized like this is a huge step up for what is possible in the realm of turn-based combat yeah and the thing is that um, people said the same thing about chain echoes last year the thing is that it came out so late in the year and it's it just passed me by at that point but now that especially me playing the pixel remaster and finding love to love for turn-based games uh especially in that art style i realized that it, it that pixel art uh, does so much in making in making turn-based seem palatable even more like a, than a 3d uh turn-based thing because uh, I, f I feel like you, you you let your imagination fill up and I feel like from what I've seen a sea of stars they're playing to that while not being quite the old pixel art but it's kind of being like more modern pixel uh, more 32 bit <laughs> they're like pixel instead of like six, 16 bit yeah so that that one to me like became an honorable mention because of the rest of the list <laughs> pretty much it's like but that one being on PlayStation Plus extra and game pass like releasing like day one on those services it's mm -hmm. it's gonna ensure that I at least try it. Like literally, uh, I have I have such a newfound appreciation for turn-based things. I went to I went and bought uh, Octopath Traveler one yesterday uh, on Xbox because mm -hmm. it was thirty bucks. I wanted to get it on Switch because the a handhold is so perfect for that. But it was sixty bucks. I was like, screw you, Switch. <laughs> I'm gonna buy this on Xbox and play it through uh, XCloud. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm wish uh, I wish listed Octopath Traveler two also and. Uh, I redownloaded Chain Echoes also, so I was like, now I'm feeling like now I understand like I, I do like this genre, uh, before yeah. because before I had just been like so against it. But if I'm perfectly honest, I was so against it because PJ was so for them, so, and I just wanted to like be against him. Yeah, <laughs> so. I I wouldn't even say that. He just he kind of looked past a lot of the issues of that mm -hmm. mechanic. Uh, so it made me kind of out of spite be like, well, guess what? These are all of the mm -hmm. negatives yeah. and why you're wrong. <laughs> no, yeah. No, it was it, it was when we were having the Final Fantasy VII Remake at launch conversation. And he was like, he wasn't even playing it. He was playing for not, it not being like turn-based. And we we're like, just play it. See what they've done. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, that, that was why. Like, I kind of like got into like my mindset to just be against it just for being hipster. But also 
just me thinking in preference i would like tapping buttons i love that feeling if you feeling a game instead of waiting for things to happen but there's a certain coolness to that and i feel it depends on how it has to be executed and definitely want to see how that one turns out uh and again like just the barrier of entry so low that i'm definitely going to try it whenever mm -hmm. it launches on august 29 one of the, la the last uh uh august games for this year so yeah and tell me if you finally jump into chained echoes because <laughs> i feel like it grabs you pretty quickly yeah uh, right now, I definitely want to finish Final Fantasy VI because I already finished one. I finished four. I want to finish six. The one that is considered one of the greatest games of all time. And yeah. with what I played, I kind of see why people mean. <laughs> so, even many years later, it's like they, there's a staying power to how they did that game. So, my number five, Paul, uh, Cyberpunk 2077: Phantom Liberty. So, yes, this is actually this, this is coming this year. It's coming late September. Uh, I wonder if I would be done with Starfield by the time this one launches. Uh, to me, why I'm putting this this here, especially because with some of the commentary of people that saw the expansion and talked with CDPR at uh, at the Summer Game Fest slash Xbox Showcase period, where they showed this game, uh, where they showed this, is like Phantom Liberty is going to be Cyberpunk's Taken King moment. Is like not only is it launching a new expand, the, the the first and only media expansion they're going to launch of that game before they move to the sequel. They are also reworking the entire game from a system like from the like fr at, at its core. It's like what it is right now. It's not going to be that by the time this launches. And this feels like the fresh start I wanted from Cyberpunk since starting and stopping it all the way since 2020. Especially me being the having been one of those poor souls that unfortunately because they didn't buy a next gen system at launch had to see that game running at its worst at, at, on base PS4. And then by the time that it quote unquote got fixed the ps4 version that i could theoretically play it on, P on on ps5 i didn't care and then when they launched the native ps5 version three days before horizon i only tried it and I, it was only like yeah this actually looks really nice it's good to see it look like this compared to what i remember it looking at launch in 2020 in 2020 with vaseline and broken as all hell and like with no loading like the the the, the, the no loading characters that was happening uh it's like my first impression had just been so deeply like marred for that game that I always was like maybe in the, in the dry spell I'll play it in a dry spell but this feels kind of like the point to be able to both play the main game and play this expansion and especially because now it's like completely fresh it's not got, like anything that was this game before it's like this this is the new launch for cyberpunk and that does excite me because I've heard so many good things from people that stuck it up with it and were always that yes it's broken but at its core there's something really good in it it's like you'll see it and this feels like an excuse to finally see it so that's why it's my number five well uh this would be on my list if i'd remembered to put it there because i guess i didn't count the expansion as like a new release but you're right it should be counted as it <laughs> so yeah this would have absolutely knocked uh mortals of avium it's out of my list um <laughs> and oh, i Alex. think it it might actually it would bump down everything below actually it would bump down sea of stars and everything below it um, oh, okay and so that would be kind of like right middle of the road yeah so yeah because uh sea of stars was your number six right correct so this so would be, be just your, above yes, that so, technically so, yeah, <laughs> so you bump, bump it down yeah I don't, I don't allow it because you tend to forget <laughs> like, I like, do. Like, like it always is but um so yeah it's like um it looks so good like what it because now this is gonna be like everything they're changing and everything that they're updating is just next gen it's a it's like just for the systems so no more ps4 or xbox one tethers that's what makes phantom liberty both so exciting and also how they're gonna do, uh, circle that back to like the main game so obviously uh, cyberpunk had its like redemption last year especially around the time of edge runners and the synergy how a lot of people that watched the anime went to play the game so other people had that experience but that missed me because i was like in valhalla land so mm -hmm. so yeah this is this feels like the perfect time and uh again i wonder how long starfield is going to take me i remember uh fallout 4 took me like two weeks like i'm just straight up playing it so so we'll see so yeah that's my number five so what is your number five paul um well it is oh shoot i just closed it out okay uh that was going to be assassin's creed mirage yeah we already talked about it so yeah. so we already talked about that jump in for you next yeah my number four is alan wake 2 
the sequel Ooh, to the, the, the sequel right. to remedy remedy is a uh, action horror game that's not going to be a survival horror game uh to me it's like ignoring whatever happened with crossfire x remedy since control like onwards has just been like it's it's in such a role it's me seeing some of the some of what they're doing with alan wake 2 they're like taking can like some of the breadcrumbs that they learn in development for control and they're like circling back to this now they're they're making this a legit survival horror game and in a year where we've been served so well with resident evil 4 and dead space adding this one kind of like as a third one to kind of like round out a phenomenal year of single player survival horror experience and seeing it seeing them try to and seeing how they would improve on the first alan wake which i've never really finished i played briefly and th that's actually going to be one of the games that uh during in any tiny dry spell that we get i want to like finish it kind of like i was doing a replay of spider-man before their sequels and 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 be and basically be ready for this one it's like it looks really good and in remedy i trust so that's why it's my number four I think this would, yeah, it's going to be in my honorable mentions for sure. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to see more of it, and I hope that it comes out and it's really good in the end. Uh, it's just not high enough on my list compared to everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, which is fair. And also, its release window is brutal. Let's just be honest. Yep. Also, so, so that 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 that's going to like hurt it a little bit, unless it's like this absolutely monster of a game that deserves a recognition, which it could be control yep. surprised a lot of people people were like oh yeah the new remedy game but it's like then control hit like a truck like when it launched in 2019 so kind of how we were talking about how that remnant from the ashes got buried by releasing next to control so and and then gears five literally after that so what is your number four paul my number four is payday three okay big, that was... big twist big twist yeah what uh, <clears throat> tell me right, why me yeah so um i was recently reminded that in its heyday uh golden age payday 2 was fantastic for it was, it was. co-op um and just the shenanigans that you could pull off with it the idea that it replicates perfectly it it doesn't have any procedurally generated stuff, but the idea that you can do so much within their maps, essentially, um, and have no real explanation for that until you just you've played that map 15 to 20 times. And then you're like, wait a minute, there's this console over here that opens this door and does this thing like just the the level of possibility and customization that you can do in that and then realizing that you're going to be able to do even more in payday three um and then i was also reminded that one of my groups of friends uh, now has all pcs and i'm really hoping mm -hmm. i can convince them not to do the pc route but uh the fact that i'm going to be able to try it out on game pass for free when mm -hmm. it comes out yeah really low uh barrier of issues entry. there yeah really low barrier of entry so it's just one of those games that if it does well and it performs right because at its lowest payday 2 was really bad mm -hmm. i'm hoping that they used this opportunity to upgrade a lot of stuff that really needed upgrading and if they keep their same mentality it could be a really great turn your brain off kind of game at the end of the day yeah and that one's launching in the middle of, of september so right yeah. uh, exactly why i put it as an honorable mention just uh, just in timing alone uh yeah. game pass will at least make it a, let me try it and see if it sticks and i know if you download it that would be a fun one to play co-op uh i never really played much of payday one or payday two like beyond just like initial like impressions i don't so, think anybody played payday one to be honest yeah it was like all the way back in ps3 i remember when it was there was like a beta that they tried it that's yeah. why i played it. it it seemed like a cool idea it's just that it was at a time where remember my rant about fifa and like how yep. like that stupid franchise i just dominated like the mind share of like my friends that had consoles that i could play with but that was all they would play um mm -hmm. uh, how would i wish that they had seen a paid and be like let's try this uh, and the, the farthest i could get them to was call of duty and even then mm -hmm. that's a weird one to just play with them because it's just like you're just adding people in and you're not like really playing with them if you're perfectly right. honest you're just shutting your brain off and playing so yeah that's why payday missed me but i've been hearing really good things about this one where people that saw it at uh at, at summer game pass and it being like on game pass i just alone that like we're seeing the benefits of 
mm. being able to like just the lower the low barrier of entry to be able to play that so that's why it was in my honorable mentions my number three paul this one three weeks ago wouldn't have been here like at all in this list mm. but it took me playing older games to, re- to, to start realizing no i actually do like this character yes i'm burnt out in the, this specific franchise but it turns out what i'm really burnt out on is the movie side of these characters i can compartmentalize and separate something that i can be excited while still saying that other franchise can go fuck itself and my number three is marvel spider-man 2 so this one uh went came in way higher for me especially after the trailer that launched at comic con two weeks ago that came in also with the 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 new plates that you can like customize your ps5 with and the controller and all that but getting to see more of that story and just finally kind of like me my mind finally compartmentalizing and seeing like i could be like i do like spider-man as a character uh spider-man it just works so well as a video game and insomniac is so good at what they do I was being reminded how good they are when we when we played uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart this year, and this is the next game after that one, and Insomniac being a studio that builds upon everything that they learn from each game that they do, that even though the yes part of me is like just the marvel of it all, it's like prevents it from being even higher than what it would that than what it would realistically be. It's just I know that the pedigree of Insomniac and some of what I saw in that trailer just from a story perspective and remembering that the thing I love the most about 2018 Spider-Man and Miles Morales beyond just how fun it was to just play because it does the Spider-Man things great. Older Spider-Man does a few things better that I prefer, but just as an overall package, just uh, the Insomniac Spider-Man games are just like a master classes. Uh, the story was the thing that stuck uh, that stuck the most for me with those games how they like did their own version of peter parker how they they did their own version of like uh, of their of the rogues galleries or at least their own representation uh they took big swings and chances killing characters you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have expected that makes the story its own and so well produced so well uh just uh, such a touching game also like in, in, so, in so many ways that I was reminded of that watching that trailer and me like replaying uh, Spider-Man Remaster recently and thinking that they could improve upon that one. It's like, that's why this was able to sneak at number three. In June, when our buddy Sebastian asked us what were our most anticipated games, remember, this wasn't even in the top 10. I literally wasn't fuck Marvel. That I was like, I was like shouting that to my core. And after seeing what happened with Secret Invasion, yeah, they can go fuck themselves harder right now like i don't care for marvel right now but spider-man insomniac spider-man gets a pass <laughs> so. Oh, so anyway uh yeah that's on my list <laughs> do you have anything else that you want to share about it actually nope okay. just, just that it's like that's why it, it managed to sneak in higher not my number one because I remember I also shared the Nakey Jakey uh, video uh, yesterday that I was like, I rewatched the, his Naughty Dog uh, design, it's outdated thing. It, Spider-Man has a little bit of that. The uh, Naughty Dog DNA in it, too. So, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm more excited about other stuff from that, but that's why like it's still a number three in a top ten? Hell yeah. I'm, this, yeah. It's, it's like, it, it's like, at least it's like, it's it's justifying me, like, being excited for it after for a while. Like, I tell you, because I still remember when I got scared when I saw the demo at the showcase. When I didn't react at all to that, that's when I was like, am I not excited for this? That demo did nothing for me. So, but yeah, the story trailer did it in, 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 in the Comic-Con thing, so. Makes sense. Uh, so, I naturally have that on my list. Uh, it's... Slightly it's, higher. It's slightly higher. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I never had any qualms or fears, not nearly to the extent that this one had. Mm-hmm. Um, I 100% was in on this because not only is it going to have my favorite dude Venom in it, uh, but like real Venom, it's going to be a real comeback sequel for both Spider-Man and Miles Morales, mm-hmm. just taking both of those out uh, at once. 
the fact that we're getting so many cool things i mean the black suit spider-man obviously we get new abilities new powers for both of them we get a bigger all sorts city. of cool stuff because bigger city explore outside um, of probably the now. first real time you can explore outside of manhattan mm -hmm. um the fact that we're going to get so many updates and continuations of probably my most invested spider-man like plot line that i've ever seen mm -hmm. in a while yeah um it's when you play it you realize how invested you get with this version of the character compared to how immense dirty he's done in like comics and uh even the MCU Spider-Man, when you really think about it, that's not really Spider-Man for me. So, yeah, I, it's just it's got just about everything that I'm looking for in a Spider-Man game at all, and mm -hmm. bordering on what I look for in most games in general. To the point that I constantly debate playing everything else that's been coming out this year mm -hmm. and going Spider to replay mm -hmm. Spider-Man instead. Yeah, it's just it's up there on my all-time favorite games it's if i had to it's like fighting a little bit right under kingdom hearts 2 mm. <laughs> of like it's within that top yeah. three so easily no it's in my so, 25 yeah. it's for sure in my 25 i don't i'm not as uh enamored with it because again like i played so many spider-man games so it's like a lot of what it does is i have a better execution of an idea that i played since 2004. that's kind of like my, my how i see it but it's still the best execution of that idea so uh what's your number three paul uh, my number three, if I'm remembering correctly, it was Armored Core 6. <laughs> okay. My number two, Paul, this one is not in your list because I bet you top dollar you forgot this game came out. It's, it's coming out also. Do you have Probably. any guess? No idea. So I'm, I'll give you a hint. It's coming out the same day as Spider-Man. Oh, uh, is that game that we talked about? I don't remember, though. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. It's my number two. The new you know, I just put that in a honorable mention. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So yeah, that's my number two, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Uh, I, my favorite game ever is Super Mario World. 2D Mario is like my favorite thing in the world. And seeing finally the evolution of 2D Mario after it has been stuck in this new Super Mario Bros. art style, purgatory forever since 2006. Like that when it came out on DS in 2006, when it came out on Wii in 2009, when it came out in 3DS in 2012, when it came out in Wii U in 2013, and then that ver that Wii U version re-released in Switch in 2018. 2D Mario has been that forever, and then seeing that in the last direct, as like it was like their their one more thing, and finally see the an evolution of the art style, and some of like the weirder vibes that they're doing is like um. If there's something that Nintendo never misses with, at least when it like when it comes to anything, is them nailing like their 2D platforming. And as boring as the other ones looked, because this art style was the same since that DS version, uh, the gameplay was always fantastic. And finally, them seeing them finally being like, enough, we're finally doing a new one. We're gonna get weird with it. And we're gonna go big with it in the year that we got one of the biggest movies in the world with Super Mario with the, the with the Super Mario Brothers movie. I can't think of a better synergy of getting that movie this year and getting this game this year. And to me, it's like a game. It's an all-time like a, a gaming year is an all-time great when you don't only get a Zelda game but you also get a Mario game. Can you believe that? Like both of those have come out uh, in, in in recent time and. And to me, it's like why I put this above Spider-Man is because like I haven't been excited for a 2D Mario game in like more than a decade, so that that, that that's why it comes out with this one and Spider-Man five years ago, 2018. So that is just more relatively recent. So that's why it's my number two. Nice. I don't know if I have too much besides the fact that it's like oh I'm glad that there's a new Mario game. I can't wait to. That's the thing. What's buy your it? story with 2D Mario? Because that the, that the term is like 2D Mario is what got me into gaming. That's why I, got, I have way more reverence to it. Well, Mario uh, Mario Land was my first handheld uh, mm -hmm. video game ever. Actually, yeah, that was probably my first mm -hmm. video game ever, really. The only other thing was Tetris. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted Pokemon. Yeah. Because uh, I hated Super Mario Land with a passion. But that no, was the it's only not a, game it's, my parents bought. Me. Yeah, that's not a good... Like, Mario Land is not a good 2D Mario. It's, and then it, I played... Mario World 3, I think, the one with the superhero cape. Uh, that, I love that. That's Super Mario World. 
Yeah, that's the Super World. Nintendo okay. one. Yeah. Um, and then I never finished it because I could not figure out how to continue the map. There was this. Yeah. Like there's you a, had to get the, to a there's secret. There's a section. Thing. There's a section where you just start circling around. Yeah, I know. Where, I know Couldn't which one figure you mean. it out. <laughs> Um, so that never happened. Never played Mario 64 until college. Mm -hmm. Um, played Mario Kart and I loved that. But then I just, I never had like a connection to the 2D Marios the way everyone else did. And I think I played like Superstar Saga and mm -hmm. some other things. And then just, I, I only played the Wii U version of Mario like way late in my college days. And I only owned it like this year. So for whatever reason, I just like I played Sunshine and that's the Galaxy. thing. Like, you have more of a story with 3D Mario than you did 2D Mario. I have story with both because that that those games were my both my upbringings. So mm. so yeah, I it makes sense why it wouldn't register for you like it did for me when they revealed it. But I was like, I cannot believe they're actually finally evolving again, doing a new a new style of this kind of game. So it's been I, a while. I will say I do like the style of this one way more than the Wii U version. And yeah. the one that they stuck with for so long. And I tell you, it's like even if we're playing Spider-Man also the same day, it's because both of these games come out that same day. I'm playing both. I'm gonna be like playing mm. both equally, like in, in the same amount of time. I'm glad I'm not reviewing Spider-Man also, so I can just take my leisure time with it. So can't wait. It's been way too long since the new 2D Mario. Eleven years. Eleven years. Think about that. It's kind of crazy, actually. <laughs> yeah. So your number two. It's obviously Spider-Man. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And our number one is the same. Yep. Say it. Shocking. Starfield. Yep. That's the one. It is. Um, I am in such a Fallout mood right now that mm -hmm. I'm debating just going back to Fallout 4 without mm -hmm. waiting for the next gen patch. Play it on Xbox want for just some 60 frames. solid. Yeah. I, I might honestly. I've seen it every time I've been booting up lately. Um, very tempted. But anyway. <laughs> The fact that we are going to basically get a lot of what I was wanting out of both Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky without mm -hmm. a lot of the fluff. Because Elite Dangerous is great until they're really holding to the fact that everything is real world physics and you just not compromising on that whole science side of it, um, which just really drains a lot of the fun out of mm -hmm. it. Then you have No Man's Sky, which is great in so many other ways, but the fact that it's a survival game, and I just don't really like survival games, mm -hmm. is just finally starting to wear on me, despite yeah. how cool all of their updates are. So this being like this middle ground, almost to that Star Citizen, like we're going to do this big bombastic cinematic, but it's also Bethesda, which is just a warm blanket for me. Um, and how much I love the stuff that Bethesda used to make when I was really getting into gaming. Um, and I mean, as we've already talked about, my love for Skyrim and Fallout. Yeah, and this is the next game from the creators of Skyrim. Skyrim 2011 Game of the Year winner. Yep. Yeah, so it's like, they haven't done a big game like this, obviously since Fallout 4, and Fallout 4 was the first of their games that didn't, that was a success. It sold a lot, it's played a lot. It's just not as highly beloved as skyrim which changed the industry you would say and yeah. like it, it showed you a new level of scale that could not be possible in like a western rpg and just how like infinitely they infinitely replayable it is on top of how often they've re-released it because it has that kind of power that the people buy it in mass in every new system that they can because it had that kind of weight to it and if they're finally able to recreate that skyrim feeling not fallout 4 but skyrim feeling in a space game where like in a genre that has been like demanding this kind of game forever as Todd Howard said it's like this was the dream game that they've always wanted to make and just in the sheer size and scope of what we see that they're attempting if there is one game this year that in just sheer uh in just sheer scale and of game design can like stand toe to toe against like tears of the kingdom could be this one but it has to launch and not be a broken mess and because the, the thing is that Skyrim launched with, it was buggy. Skyrim was buggy. Different mm. times though. The fact that a game yep. like Skyrim could run at a 360 or a PS3 at all, which by the way, the game didn't even run on PS3. Remember that whole saga? It was like, yep. that was a game that you had to play on 360. <laughs> if you're on PS3, you were out of luck. Uh, it's like, now they're launching at a time where uh, 
the jankiness of a Bethesda game, it's not gonna... It's not cute anymore. It's no longer acceptable. Or they're not gonna... It's not gonna be like, it's so ambitious, uh, we're gonna wave it this time. If they got away with it with the, with the older games, but by Fallout 4, we were like, mm, this machine should be able to run this better. Why is it so buggy? And then Fallout 76, obviously, completely ruin an entire company's reputation and now that they oh, have to yeah. be acquired by microsoft so and now they have microsoft money and microsoft's matt booty he said at a summer game fest like interview that they said that if they had released that game th that day he was having the interview it would still be the most polished bethesda game ever released big words mm. big words saying that so but if, 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 even if it doesn't come 100 percent like super clean because yeah. their games are like the permutations of how you can do any single game with like you can grab sandwiches everywhere put it everywhere like i create your own ship and do everything out of order you can probably end the life of an npc that's gonna give you a quest and all that they have to kind of account for that if for some reason people break like the sequencing of the game uh is it that's what makes their game special but that's why their, their games break also but let's i want i want this more than anything to be like Xbox is finally having a game that makes Nintendo fans and PlayStation fans absolutely jealous of like oh now they now they fighting is like now because that's for them that's them if they can make like because obviously Nintendo had that game this year with Zelda Tears of the Kingdom um I wouldn't say Final Fantasy 16 was that for PlayStation and I don't and Spider-Man's going to sell a lot because it's Spider-Man but when it comes to like gaming culture, like uh, like game, like what it can do for gaming, I feel like Starfield has that chance to make that kind of impact, with how long it's taken, the resources Microsoft are putting to it, like putting on it, and that showcase from June really sold me more on on like the vision of this game. That that was like one of the greatest showcases I've ever seen of like a single game. How they did that 45 minute demo, that they answered every single question imaginable. And just seeing it, it was one of those games kind of like when we were sell there earlier this year. It's like, how is this running on a Switch? Like, like, like it's like it's pushing so out of its way. Starfield feels like that. It may not be the most pristine looking game, but Bethesda games never been that. Because it's like they emphasize what's, because graphics are just skin deep. They emphasize the depth. And, and, and the visual sacrifices what's needed to like achieve a game that could like stand for years and years <laughs> in endless possibility of people doing different kind of ships or exploring things uh, this has that potential because that's always been Bethesda Bethesda needs to remind people why they were a big deal people think of them just with Fallout 4 and 76 because what have you done for me lately and obviously 76 completely solid their reputation but this could be both the comeback and it could be kind of like uh it has the potential if it hits everything it's trying to do to be like a defining game of this generation like elden ring last year also and mm -hmm. sell and tears of the kingdom this year too so really excited for that, that that's why it's like regardless of how it lands it's like it feels like the event of the fall and that's why it's my number one and i bet it's also it's, it's also your number one too you basically took all the words out of my mouth and I, I will try not to repeat the same things that you've said already on it but um just from the sheer style that it reeks of at, at every point the little like touches of things that they're not touching on like that weird telekinesis ability mm -hmm. that they mentioned like there's a lot of mystery that i really wasn't expecting out of this that i really want to dive into for what this world is about. It almost makes me feel like there's been a very specific reason to omit certain things. Mm -hmm. um, and like this, the switch through of all of the armors that you can wear really branching out from just that. The aesthetic. Like, yes. The aesthetic, um, like, uh, especially I rewatched Interstellar recently after like my Oppenheimer, like yeah. high. And it's like, they're clearly inspired by so much Interstellar aesthetic in it. That kind of like uh, what's the what's the word uh, for that? Oh, uh, for, for that, they call it NASA punk, but it's called uh, retro futurism. Retro futurism, exactly. Yes. This retro, retro futurism in sci-fi, you get a little bit in Destiny sometimes. Like when you're in Europa, a little bit. There's mm -hmm. there's a little retro futurist in the in the labs. It's like that. There's just something so old school charming about retro futurism, and they're like so deep 
into like in, into like nailing that aesthetic with, with Starfield. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, pretty much exactly that. And the the fact that the combat looks actually really solid, the mm -hmm. jetpack abilities, like you are going to be having so many options. It feels like what Deus Ex wants to be sometimes. <laughs> um, it's just. It looks really solid, and I am so excited to make a character and dive headlong into this nonsense. I am praying that it works perfectly fine on the Series S, and it no. sounds like it will because that's what Todd, Todd works Howard, on. If, yeah, if it's it, good for Todd, it's good for me. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> because it's like he's been. He said intentionally he's been playing it on Series S because he wants to make sure it works yep. for that one because he knows that's the platform on console the majority of people are gonna play it on. And also of note to remember, the Black Series S, that's a terabyte hard drive, it's coming out the same day as the early access of this game. That's right. So it's like, you you can tell what they're trying to do. How they're, they're, they're trying to proliferate this game. So it is imperative for the Series S version to work. So really hopeful for that. It's like, especially after Redfall created such a stink this year for Microsoft. Um, uh, everything turning around for them, like the acquisition for Activision Blizzard, like finally going their way. Uh, their showcase being the best showcase of any showcase this year. Like finally, like at least for anyone that wants to know the future of that platform, that the future of that platform is solid right now. Like with, with PlayStation, we, only, we didn't know anything beyond Spider-Man. So it's like, so, so, so it's like now uh, this finally feels like the micro, the fighting Microsoft that I want. And obviously we've had many stops and starts with with freaking Xbox this generation. 2021, they actually had games in the fall on like Sony, so they're finally in fighting shape. Then 2022 comes in, no games at all. Then 2023 launches with uh, Hi-Fi Rush, which is, was one of the bigger surprises of this year because I was like, how did they be able to keep this game hidden and it's so good and they'll just launch it like this? They're like, they have so many bullets in the chamber now. This is finally the moment that Microsoft will finally get like in fighting shape again after such a dry year. Redfall happens. So it's like, um, so, 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 so it's like any time that you feel like they're finally in, in, a, in a great spot to fight, they always step on the rake. And, yep. and and that Redfall rake stepping was like brutal for them. That was like sullying like Arcane, Ar Arcane's reputation to, to fall 76 degree. Like, when they could, and, yeah. and the, the things we, we learned that Arcane wanted that game to be canceled, and that's when we learned that Microsoft was a little too hands off. They oh, The only thing they cared about was them making that game exclusive, and that's it, because there was a PS5 version coming. So it's like, after the, that showcase that really turned their, like, the perception of everything around them, and now this game finally coming out, and if all those announced games that finally they put years, they all start releasing, now it's finally here. It's like, uh, this, this era where PlayStation is just coasting by and dominance right now because of their market power and Nintendo doing their own thing in, in its own success is like we need we need that third console like disruptor because yeah. then that makes everyone do the better job everything so Starfield all eyes on you you're coming in literally a month from today because of the early access <laughs> so so yeah it's like don't let us down. You're our number one. So, let me read you real quick the honorable mentions. I always have mentioned which one worked, but so, so we can have like the full list. Uh, for honorable mentions, I had Baldur's Gate 3. We talked about that. I've had Fort Solace. Uh, obviously, we got that 14 minute oh, gameplay yeah. yesterday. Uh, that was made. I didn't get to see that yet, but I heard it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I got, I got to skim through it. I was like, oh, it's a very Quantic Dream style game. And the fact that it has Troy Baker and Roger Clark as the voices, that adds a lot. Uh, in the performances, so I want to hear how that one turns out. And that one's exclusive to PS5. It's coming in August. Uh, I mentioned CS Stars, uh, Bomb Rush, Cyberpunk, uh, Cyberpunk, the Jet Set Radio style like yep. inspired game, got a release date yesterday of September 1st. So it's launching straight into the grave, which makes me so sad. Why are you launching the same day as uh, as Starfield? Uh, do, are, are you banking on being such counter programming? They're gonna be successful, but who's? Uh, we'll see that. People have been wanting a Jets or Radio game that looks exactly like that, and it's coming so soon. So, really hoping for the best that they doesn't get too buried. Uh, Lies of P, uh, the Pinocchio Souls like this happened that's launching mid September. I played the demo. It's like as close as you can get to a Bloodborne while not really nailing it. Uh, it's definitely coming to Game Pass, so at least we can try it there, beyond just the demo. 
uh, Mortal Kombat 1. This was actually in my top 10, but then realizing the entire list, I was like, you know what? I was like, this is a fighting game. Uh, I can wait for this one. Uh, obviously, we got our arrangement. We'll see. Who, uh, like, what I've been looking at Mortal Kombat actually looks really nice, especially the story side of things, which is always my big thing. So, can't wait to see what they do with that story. Uh, Eternites, uh, the action the, the character action based game that's also like a dating sim that sony revealed last year also coming out in september which is insane <laughs> it's so freaking insane uh, that's coming that's... out that, year. that one and just the idea of like a devil may cry style game that's also like a persona 5 style dating sim together that's such a unique concept to me so so I, I, i'm hoping that one turns out good uh, i don't know what the price is for that one but um that one definitely feels like a wait for sale if it's good. Um, Payday 3, we already talked about that. Uh, also, the Metal Gear uh, Master, Solid Master Collection Volume 1. Uh, Lords of the Fallen 2023, also in my in my honorable mentions. I got to see a recent gameplay clip that made the game look just like Elden Ring. And that one, I want to hear how much they nail it. Uh, because this is a different developer doing Lords of the Fallen. And it looks upgraded from the last one. That came out so many years ago so in a year where shockingly we've been like light on souls likes thankfully this field if it nails it i feel this could be like that one and last of p could be like the serving for people in that for, for people in that genre if they both hit uh, alone in the dark 2023 this is another one of the uh survival horror games this year this one has david harbour in it this is this coming on the way of embracer and the vibe of the trailer look cool this is coming closer to Halloween, and I want to hear if it also nails it and maybe makes it the fourth survival horror single player game to nail it in a year that has just nailed it there. Uh, then uh, another honorable mention for me was Star Ocean, the second story R. Uh, that's the Star Ocean game that we saw then at the last Nintendo Direct we looked that had the 2D uh, HD uh, 3D art style. Kind of like Octopath and all that. That's kind of like a rem. I think it was like a remake of an old Star Ocean. Again, like this wouldn't have registered for me if, if now this kind of game ha is it hadn't resonated like it is now. So it's like now I want to hear how it is because this is in, in November's looking mighty empty, mighty empty. I tell you, it's like it's actually a shockingly empty November compared to uh, September and October. So in the quietness around that time, that's kind of what if this one hits. That could be one that I really dive into. Uh, do you hear that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell them. It's like, hey, you know. Uh, another one that I want to hear how this one lands because it changed the name, but it's technically the eighth entry of the series. Like a Dragon Guide and the Man Who Raised His Name. This is basically Jakusa 8. Yep. I said they're going so deep into renaming the Jakusa series, but this is basically the new Jakusa. So weird uh, decisions all around, but. Uh, the like a dragon ishing game that came out earlier uh, this year was super well received in february so they were releasing another one of those they're sega's like pumping this one's this one's out so the other one was more of a samurai game this is more of a jakusa game non non uh, turn based so yeah that's why i'm into again empty november makes this kind of game stand out for me as i okay well, i want to hear how you do with that one uh persona 5 tactica uh that one why i'm putting it there because it's a tactics game is also in game pass so at least i get to try it also in november and then finally super mario rpg the kind of like the remake of the super mario rpg from snes getting the full treatment coming to nintendo ds that year want to hear if it's actually good and uh, maybe another of the big nintendo purchases i make this year so what were yours paul uh let me take a look right here i've got bomb rush cyber Cyberpunk, um, Rush, no. Cyberpunk. Oh man, I tell myself I'm gonna say it right every time. Yeah, because I I, I, I always want to say Cyberpunk, Bomb Rush, Cyberpunk, yep. but it's Cyberpunk. Yep. Uh, under the Under the Waves was that um, creepy underwater. Oh one. yes. When you, yeah. yeah. So that's on my honorable mentions. Uh, I really want to take a look at it. I hope it's good and maybe try it out. Take a stab at my deep fears mm -hmm. than uh star ocean second story r because it's just charming enough for me to think mm -hmm. well it's kind of nice and there's not enough like space fantasy and star ocean really had that in spades mm -hmm. um and i'm kind of a, it's a shame that that never really like continued to take off after a while 
And the last one that I have listed here is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora because it seems just interesting enough to keep an eye out for, but not enough that I'm like really invested in. And of course, most of the ones that you've kind of listed, it's like mm -hmm. they're there, but I don't yeah. really want to waste my time listing it on another list. Oh, yeah, but excuse me. you forgot to put Immortals of Avium <laughs> there in your honorable mentions because you put. Yeah, OK, <laughs> it's technically all right. Immortals of Avium <laughs> and, Mar and, Mario Wander, and Mario Wander and Alan Wake too. <laughs> and Mario and Alan Wake yeah. and nothing else. Yeah, it's... stopping myself from adding more things. Yeah, but that's the thing. A lot of honorable mentions like that looks cool. I want to hear how it turns out. That's Basically. that's kind of why I put it there. But incredible fall just in volume at all, alone. I tell, again, like we're never gonna get a year like this again, Paul, because this is the result of all the delays that COVID did. So I'm gonna enjoy it as much as I can because 2024, unless we hear otherwise, we're in the time where we, we should start hearing now more about 2024. Uh, and so we hear like what the solid release dates are. I fear for that year to, to not even remotely like come close to this. Now imagine if it somehow is even more. <laughs> Can you imagine? I, I can't. I'm already blown away by the fact that I have an ent more than a year's worth of games coming out in the next like three months mm -hmm. uh than most years that i've had so yeah i i'm almost looking forward to when it's quiet again yeah but to be able to play them all and then... finish them all <laughs> so paul real quick read them again from 10 to 1 for you just as a reminder uh yes of course uh because i totally have that here this whole time okay so, 10 was Atlas Fallen, mm -hmm. 9, Baldur's Gate 3, 8, Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1, 7, Sea of Stars, 6, uh, Phantom Liberty, 5, uh, yeah, uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage, mm -hmm. 4, Payday 3, 3, Armored Core 6, 2, Spider-Man 2, and lastly, 1, Starfield. 10, Atlas Fallen. 9, Immortals of Avium. 8, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. 7, Assassin's Creed Mirage. Armor, uh, 6, Armor Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. 5, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. 4, Alan Wake 2. 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2. 2, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. 1, Starfield. Can't wait. Solid, solid list, I tell you. Like, both yours and mine of like such a... Especially... In any, imagine if that was just it for this year. This is still this is still would have made a pretty great 2023. Mix it with everything we already got from January to now. All of this together is like, yep, history book year. Paul, uh, that concludes this week's episode. Real quick, uh, read us the the release dates for the week of August 6th to August 12th. All right, we have Gord on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC on August 8th. Tower of Fantasy on PlayStation 5, August 8th. WrestleQuest, what? Yeah, Tower of Fantasy is the MiHoYo game, I think, right? Ah, uh, that's what that is. Yeah. Um, WrestleQuest on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on August 8th. 30XX on Switch, PC on August 9th. Atlas Fallen on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S on PC on August 10th. Stray on Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One that's the on cat August game. 10th. That's a CAD game from last year. Right. Um, and that's just finally coming to the Xbox games, mm -hmm. uh, systems rather. Stray Gods, the role-playing musical. Hmm. Yeah. PlayStation 5, <laughs> Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch and PC on August 10th. And lastly, House Flipper for PlayStation VR 2 and PlayStation VR on August 11th. That 30XX game, it's pretty much Mega Man, it feels like. I'm Is looking it really? at it, I'm looking I'm at an it image. It's like it's such a Mega Man uh oh wow that, yeah no that, it is <laughs> that is copyright infringement yeah. right there that is more mega man than mighty number no. nine was yeah <laughs> like super blatant uh yeah uh, i wonder how they uh, uh, they haven't said much about that so i wonder if they're just trying to sneak it through the system um uh, atlas fallen is a big one for that for for that week and let's see mm -hmm. if we get it so but Ar armor course is the big one for uh for august for sure absolutely <laughs> so but yeah like and let's hope atlas fallen is good too because yeah uh, 
I'm looking wondering... forward. I hope all of them are good, yeah. but I almost hope one of them is bad so I don't have to buy, buy it. it. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. I imagine last year, even when the games were bad, we still bought them because we were just famished. Around this time, we bought I, Saints I had... Row. Remember? Ooh. Yeah. That was that was a time. I was desperate. Now we're barely desperate now, which means games really have to be good to justify our time. So, yep. Atlas Fallen, hoping the best for you because you actually look really cool. So now that brings the end of the show. Paul, where can people find you? As always, y'all can find me at Dork of Art on Twitter. Um, I have been posting me breaking. Which game was it last? Uh, uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate. Because That's now right. I because I feel now I understand what's happening that you probably have a really crappy hard drive that's not streaming assets f uh, fast enough because you were running Red Dead from that hard drive right? That is correct. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, so it's like it's it's your hard drive is having streaming. Uh, that can explain anything that was on my PS4 external. Mm -hmm. Everything that was a PS5 game. That's breaking, just yeah. that's internal. Yes. So <laughs> there's 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 some kind of gremlin in my system still. But at least we figured out everything that was a PS4 ah. game. We the mystery is solved on that one. We've done it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh... But yeah. Anyway, I, I just post things uh, when I break games and when I draw stuff, which needs to happen again. Soon. Yeah, I've been missing like your art. I like, remember when that was used to be like a more common thing, but Obviously... I've been doing a little bit more pixel art lately to practice for something, and I'm hoping that I can start posting a few of those like attempt one, attempt two, because pixel art is confusing as crap because yeah. you have to get the resolution exactly right when you make the art or mm -hmm. you're screwed yeah so dialing that in has been a bit of a tri uh, trial and error process. it's why people go to the it just, it's why people go to the the 2d hd route sometimes because yeah. it's so much easier to animate something because you need those squares like so specific for them to work it's but on the other side if you get that right it is so satisfying to look at after you're done yeah it's like i love pixel final final like the pixel remasters are so pleasing to look at because of that specifically exactly. So, uh, you can find me on Twitter at, uh, well, at X, at A underscore Drosegovia. You can find me both on Instagram and threads at Alejandro Segovia 93. And you can find my written content at both the critical corner dot com mm -hmm. and seasongaming.com. Paul, so it's a pleasure doing this one early, that uh, theme one. Now we go into the fall. Excitement abound. And I'm gonna Can't go. I, I'm gonna go scold him for being like using, <laughs> using the blender. When I told him, I tell him not to when I'm recording because of that. It sounds like a way. vacuum cleaner from here, honestly. Right, but it's, it's a blender all the way from my kitchen. That's all the way on the back. <laughs> so, but hey, at least not my dog. <laughs> so, and now I'm back to Final Fantasy. Are we gonna play Remnant? Um, let let me find out. <laughs> All right, you let me know. But hey, everyone else, thank you so much for listening to this episode. We appreciate your listens. Like uh, audio is really picking up. Uh, video, it will pick up once it exists. Once it, it just exists. But thank you so much. I hope uh, beginning of the month now. So hope you enjoy the rest of this month. Like. Uh, all the people I have to go back to school, I feel sorry for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the end of the summer. Uh, stay shaded. Don't get too burnt out. Uh, stay also healthy. Keep playing some games and... Press X. To play. Good night, everybody. Adios.